Hello, it's Keith from KMA's Corner. How are you doing today? Welcome to my single player world. Keith plays Minecraft. That's what I do here. I play Minecraft. Surprise! Um, I have been working with some villagers, as you can hear. I've been trading with them, trying to get the good trades. And I have recorded a segment. Actually, it will be a montage. Haven't montaged it up yet, though. But you'll see it in about 20 seconds of me trading with different villagers. Um, how I trade with them, which villagers I trade and what I'm looking for. And um, my choice of selections of the ones I want to keep for trading in the future. So, with not much further ado, here's that little montage. And I hope you learned something. This ain't the... <clears throat> excuse me. This ain't the be-all, end-all of trading with villagers, it's just the way I do it. So I hope you enjoy. We start trading with a librarian, who's probably your most important um, person. So what you do want to do immediately is trade with them, unleash the next set of trades. Um, this guy, the first trade was Smite 3, which is no good, but we unlocked the second trade, which would bring us more books. Best thing to do here is trade for the bookshelf. Hopefully it's not a four like this guy is. Uh, usually you want a three emerald one, but actually he was a three emerald. Then that unleashes the glass trade. Uh, he can get up to one emerald for five glasses. Then he unleashes the second book. And this guy has a fortune two, and I already have a fortune two guy. This one's for 31. Let's see. Uh... The other guy is for 12, so this fortune 2 is not nearly as good as the one I already have. So we're going to have to trade some more with him to find out what this last book is. He could either do the trade for the fortune 2 book and immediately will give you the last book, but that costs 36 emeralds. So what I like to do <clears throat> is do these menial trades with a paper and trades for the glass because you always need glass. And eventually he will unleash his last trade. Maybe. Ah, there we go. And his last book is... Oh, Bane Anthropods. So this guy is a dud. Um, he has a fortune too, but we already have the cheaper fortune too. His glass trade isn't that good, and I already got a perfect one. And his paper trade isn't that good, because I think you can get down to 26 or 24 paper for each one butchers you just don't want to keep at all just kill this guy um, you can get some cooked meat from him and trade a whole bunch of raw meat for emeralds not worth it bye let's see what this guy is a leather worker I'm not a big fan of leather workers either um, you can't really get much from him maybe some leather a saddle maybe clerics I already have a perfect cleric, but I'm going to show you how to undo a cleric. You know, you do the basic um, rotten flesh trade, and it unleashes his first trades for redstone and lapis. And both of these are pretty bad because you can get, I think, four redstone and four lapis for one emerald. Not 100% sure on that. Which unleashes the glowstone trade. And you can get an ender pearl, ender eye. So with the glowstone trade, the good thing about this is he will undo the XP bottles. So if you ever wanted XP bottles, there you go. But I already have a couple of perfect clerics, so you go bye-bye. I had no reason to undo him. Farmer. <clears throat> you can get carrots and potatoes at 15 and wheat at 18. And this guy has the perfect wheat trade, so we're going to keep him. What is this guy? This guy's a Fletcher. <laughs> you can get arrows, but you know what? Fletchers are useless. So, bye-bye. Mm-hmm. This guy is a weaponsmith. You're giving him some coal and unleashes an iron trade. So make sure you have plenty of coal and iron around. And there's the iron trade. When you undo the iron trade, he unlocks more stuff for you. And that stuff would be swords, diamond swords, and diamond pickaxes. This is what you want. 
Ooh, not smite though. That's not bad because you can, can combine a couple of those to make a decent axe. But I already have um, a pretty good axe. I don't know if I'm going to keep them. I decided to go into my thing, my breeder, and kill off all the ones I don't need because I want to end this breeder and just take it down. So I'm just going through here real quick. Cler clerics, I already have the perfect one. Kill them off. Kill off the cleric. Bye bye. Yeah, we don't need you. Um, might as well get this cleric over here. Armor we can use because they sell uh, diamond chest plates, so we'll keep him. Weaponsmith, we can get diamond swords from him. Leather worker, sorry, we don't need any more saddles or things like that. Farmers, we keep because they're good traders. Fletchers, see ya. Don't want you. Leather worker, we're gonna kill you off too because you're pretty useless for our needs. Bye bye. And weaponsmith, obviously, you can get the weapons. And I think, um,. All these guys are good, so we're going to keep them. And this is what happens. Um, I have this librarian with the Fortune 3. He is my queen. I'm going to make a shrine for him. Bow down. You only have Fortune 2, so I'm sorry. You have got to go because I'm going to upgrade you. Uh-huh. Now we've got the Fortune 3. He is... Um, the most important guy for me, Fortune 3 can severely make your game a lot easier by, you know, instead of when you get 8 diamonds, you can easily make it 16 to 20 diamonds with a Fortune 3 pick. So this guy is invaluable. You want to save him, keep him for later, hit him with the sword. <laughs> I hit him with the sword to get rid of the uh, mine cart, but that cart got stuck back there, but I can just get rid of these two pieces and sneak it out um, the villagers will take one hit with a sword so he is a keeper I am I'm not even gonna do his other trades right now I'm just gonna put him up there keep him for later and you will see me use this guy a lot well maybe not a lot but just to make the best pickaxe I can possibly make in this game and that's why we do villager tradings so we can get the best material. So basically, the strategy for trading is that you take the trades that are unlimited paper trades, trades for wheat, carrots, and potatoes, so you have big farms for that, and you trade and get the emeralds to buy the stuff that you want. So that's why it is important to have a farm like that even though I do say it's useless unless you're doing massive trading, which after I built that farm, there was nothing more I could do. So I decided to do massive trading and I need to beef up my paper or my sugarcane field. But that's the deal. You sell your stuff to the farmer to get our emeralds and then you can go and buy the books. So with the trading that I've been doing um, that you just saw, here are some villagers of note. I've got the Silt Touch book, Fortune 3 book with the Aqua Affinity also, Efficiency 2 pickaxe, which I can get two of those combined to make a three, you know, and finally, if I need to make the five. <clears throat> I got the fire aspect, which I don't know, I don't usually use it, but just in case. Um, I got the Efficiency 5, which kind of eliminates that. With the Feather Fallen 3, I can combine two of those and get the best Feather Falling. Uh, unbreaking 3 Diamond Chest, which I can combine with this Protection 3, Depth Strider 3. I got the Perfect Wheat Buyer here. 18 is the lowest. Um, 15 would be for potatoes and 15 would be for carrots also. But, you know, 18 wheat, I'll find one that has all three of those perfect and keep them. The looting, gotta have the looting. Looting is almost as important as fortune in this game. Uh, combine a couple of those and you got looting three, which is perfect for uh, farming wither skeleton heads. Um, we got the the stuff I had before. Uh, I don't know why I had that feather falling if, let's see, is it wasn't there a feather falling over here? 
confused. Oh, Feather Fallen 3. So yeah, I can replace this guy over here. This guy can go bye-bye. Uh, unless he has something else. But that's a... yeah. These are my original ones. I think I showed you the perfect cleric, basically. Lore 3. Um, this is really good. If I ever... oh, that's a axe. If I ever need to get an axe... There you go. For a second I was thinking that was a pick. Got the sharpness 5. And the perfect glass trade. Um, flame 1. Hmm. For the bows. And that's pretty cheap. The perfect rotten flesh buyer guy. Respiration. We got the, the sword here, which I can combine. Uh, two of them make the sharpness 3. Then I got more. Uh, there's... A, so many possibilities and things are going to be trade changing because I still have 40 or 50 villagers to go through over there and maybe 10 over there. I killed off, you saw in the montage, some of the useless ones over there. And as you see, there's no more melons here because I made the second row uh, of villagers and just like this, this is a double pod, one on each side. Uh, what is it, 10 long? So there's 20 villagers here, there's going to be 20 villagers here. And so eventually I'm going to have to get rid of the pumpkin farm, and I'll show you what I'm doing with that in a second. But let me give you a bird's eye view of the plan here. Go up to my best house ever. <laughs> I told you I'm going to keep that house forever in this world, so be prepared. Um... You see how this is working out uh, with the villagers there and there, and it's going to go over and compete with that, and this pumpkin's going to be gone. Ignore that for now. Um, and when the two rows of villagers are there, I'm going to build a house around there. This is going to be where my villagers are going to be stored, and I may add a um, storage place either below it or near it maybe over here or something but um this is going to be a new building it's been a little while since i've built i mean i've built farms but i haven't built anything that looks good i'm more of a farm builder than a house builder yeah so without much more um seeing i needed a way to get melons i've come up with this way that woolly has shown and watch the melon it just disappeared and there's some stuff going on down there uh, this is a thing I copied from Wooly very good job um, and it's a melon farm it's kinda hard to see what's going on here with the glass but there's two uh, air pockets here one for the plant and one above it and there's only one over here for where the melon grows so the melon grows hair here. I have a hard time saying that word because I'm from Boston and we don't like to pronounce our R's. I pack the car and have ya and have some clam chowder, you know. Go to Southie and have some clam chowder. But I try not to talk like that. So here <laughs> um, is where the melons grow. And what happens, uh, there's a etho timer clock in there and it times for five stacks of I think I put granite in there because granite sucks and um, after the etho timer goes through the five it has a sticky pistons that lift everything up crushes the melons then a cart comes out here picks everything up and brings it back to a storage chest and this has been running not too long in this world uh, maybe 15 20 minutes and I've already got three stacks of melons. So I'm going to make an identical farm for the pumpkin one on the other side of this. Maybe get rid of this row of glass and combine the two in one. I don't know what I'm going to do yet. Um, so I can move that and put the extra villagers there and then build the house around it. So let's go look at the insides. Everybody who hates redstone goes groan. <laughs> but... It's pretty simple, actually. Uh, this is Etho Timer that I was telling you about. And it just happened to be done. 
Um, it's a pretty easy thing, thing to set up. A lot of farms use this, and you've seen me use this plenty of times. Just two hoppers going into each other with a comparator, and redstone dust at each end, and sticky pistons with a redstone block in the middle, then the time-wise, you put the amount of time you want in there for the flower farm that I made, and Serenity, I had three blocks in here, I think. For something like this, there's five stacks of blocks, and of course, granite. And then uh, you take the signal, it comes out of here, lit it up, uh, invert it because it's a positive signal right now, and it goes into this, which sends a signal all the way down here, converts this positive signal to positive signals here, which in form hits these sticky pistons to push this up to squish the melons into the glass up there. And at the same time, it sends a signal over here to send the hopper cart, which is a hopper mine cart. There's a hopper inside there. And seeing that there's only there's no space for the melons to go when the uh, sticky pistons push up, it squishes them over towards where the melons are actually growing, the melon stalks. And, oops, didn't mean to do that. And um, thank you for coming back. And so all the melons are over here on the melon stalks, and this comes and picks it up. And what happens um, is that this is an item elevator, and it goes up to my chest. It's basic, 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 basic. Oh, this is the timer for the item elevator, by the way. It's just a quick little pulse timer to send the items up each one to the chests. Um, not too familiar with this thing because I don't, I haven't made too many of these. Uh, the only other one that I know I have made um, was for the gold farm. So that's what this is all about. And it does a massive awesome job. And I'm really happy with that. We're out here at my villager breeding farm and sounds a bit quiet there's no noise there's no vo villagers I have used all the villagers I have gone through them all and I have set up a track to start bringing villagers over from over here at the other breeder and believe it or not as you see, there are no villagers over there either. So I've cleaned out the 40 villagers that were over there and the bunch that was over there that was left over there. Um, and I have basically completed the villager trading. I may do some uh, trading in the future, but basically everyone I've um, unlocked their trades are just uh, ones that I'm gonna kill or like slow upgrades from the ones I've already got trades with. Um, so I got a perfect carrot guy, an efficiency two diamond pick, a better death strider. <clears throat> really, um, that's all I basically did with the last 40 or 50 villagers I've unlocked. So. I think I'm done doing the villager trading unless something, you know, magical happens and I get some sort of awesome looting three book. So I am gonna write down what all these people do, group them in four sections or, you know, whatever these people sell, I will stick, um, in four sections in the house, one section for armor, one section for um, you know books for tools So it will be a lot easier to do the trading then start working on the building around These pods that I have set up now these pods aren't gonna be like this in the future I don't think I still haven't decided whether or not I'm gonna put a storage system underneath here or with the villagers but uh, next episode, we're going to start working on the house, building some something beautiful there. And I also have finished the pumpkin farm. And as you see, some pumpkins have already been created. 
ready to be destroyed. Let's see. I, I got 47 now. Those are just got destroyed. Um, the redstone was pretty simple. It was just basically copying. And there it picks up the stuff. And yeah. Let me show you that real quick. I initially was going to try and um, use the Etho Timer one for both of the farms, but for some reason I was having trouble hooking this timer up with this one. Well, not using this one, but hooking this timer up and bringing it over here. So it's time wise, it was just faster for me to build another Etho Timer to stick here. So it's just an exact duplicate. And for some reason, this doesn't affect the things. I wish I could have gotten them linked better. So when both of these go up, they go up at the same time. But it's not really that big a deal. So now my felon... Mm, felon. <laughs> my felon farms. <laughs> yes, I'm breeding felons. Oh boy, this world can't handle that. Um, so that is all done. The villager trading is all done. Now it's to house them and start abusing their benefits to this world and to build the house around them. That's the goal for the next episode, build the house around them. And I am going to have to go because I have finished everything that I wanted to do and time has run out. Yes, I know. So sad. But, next week, we're going to build the house for the villagers and do some other amazing stuff. Whatever that is, I haven't decided yet. Why don't you tell me in the comments below what you want me to do here in this world, and maybe I'll do it in the next episode. For now, have a good day. This is Keith. Rock on.